The Body Shop connects you with the hottest fitness models in the world. Learn the backstage secrets that most successful bikini divas, fitness models, and bodybuilders use to dominate their competition and land on the covers of magazines. Only here at The Body Shop will we allow you to listen and talk to the best of the best in fitness competition. If you're passionate about bodybuilding and fitness, you have found your new home. All of us here at FTNS Radio would like to welcome you to The Body Shop. Welcome to the Body Shop. It's Thursday night edition. We're live. I'm here with a couple special guests. We're getting ready for the Fitness Atlantic competition on April 14th. Yucheno, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Just getting ready for the show. All right. And yep. Kai, what's happening, man? Same old. Um, I think you need a couple of these pecans. Yeah, same, same old routines. <laughs> There he goes. Down the peak end, a couple energy drinks. There we go. Yep. All right. What's happening, guys? Uh, Got about three and a half weeks. We're almost there. Talking to your nutritionist. You're lining it up. Yep. He told you what to do. Yep. Start my cardio next week. Kicking uh, in cardio. Yep. Three I, weeks to the show, yep. you add cardio. You know, it's what works. Man. Yep. I start my cardio next week. Actually, this week, I actually ran a mile. You did? I ran a mile this week. <laughs> I lost three pounds. In the- <laughs> there we go. <laughs> he had the scale ready. Ran yep. that mile, jumped on the scale. Three pounds gone. Yep. Bam. Just like that. Sleep seven. Four, uh, well, well, I was just yeah, going to say, went home. This I, guy I, has yep. a little sleeping problem. Goes to sleep and, and wakes out. up, and yep. that's it. Yep. Five more pounds. Yep. So I did my started my cardio this week, and I think I'm gonna stick with running. Last last year I used uh, spinning, and I lost too much weight too quickly. Yeah. I lost 20 pounds in 30 days. Yeah, it's it's above like your target heart rate. Yeah, zone. totally. It's pushing yeah. it, yeah. you know. All right, Kai, what's up? What do you do for cardio? Are you doing any? Um, no, I haven't started cardio yet. Um, when are you gonna start up? About uh, two days before? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> you gonna run a half mile? Yeah, it's a week and a half before the show. I'll start cardio. A week and a half. Um, yeah. Uh, due, yeah. Due to the supersets that I do, yep. um, you know, my heart rate stays. Uh, uh, it's like I'm work. I'm. At, it's like I'm doing cardio and lifting weights at the same time. Sometimes right. uh, with when it comes to when I'm doing like maybe five machine uh, superset. Um, mm-hmm. But um, for cardio, what I use is um, I actually use a stair climber and um, I use a weighted bar. Wait a uh, second. Yeah. You go on a stair climber. I go on a stair climber. You go on the old-fashioned step mill? The step mill, yes. I will right. go on the step mill. Uh, it's usually I, 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 I start doing my cardio, and I, I'll, I do it. That's the last thing I do for the day. Um, yeah. So I'll hit the gym later on. Um, nine times out of ten, that's my second workout of the day because I do a lot of uh, twofers. Uh, and I'll, and I'll um, get on the step mill, and I usually... Um, you know, first couple of days it's maybe 12 pounds, and then I'll up it to uh, the 15 pound bar, and I twist. I Wait step, a second. Yes, I you're step on a step, step mill, twist, and you put a bar on your shoulders. Yes, bar on the shoulders. Yeah, and I'm stepping and twisting. Really? Yes. It's a, it's it's I it, it's it's the most attention I get at the gym. Yeah. Uh, minus when I actually uh, you know throw a tank top on or something <laughs> of that nature. Yeah, you know, I'm usually fully clothed. But yeah, I, that's the that's when I get I get the most. What is this guy doing? Yeah. And oh my gosh! And then you know after I'm done, you right. know I usually get the questions. You know I'll get a ton of questions, and I'm like, hey, you know that's 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 where part of the abs come from, man. You know it's from stepping and twisting, stepping and twisting, and then I'll do a good you know 15, 20 minutes, and you know I'm on my way. Hmm. 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. That's it. That is it. That's oh. all you need. You guys are crazy. Yeah, well, <laughs> you guys just uh, defy all the what people are telling you. It's the good genes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you go to the gym in the morning, at night. What time do you train? Uh, middle of the day. Middle of the day? Yep, after so, my third or fourth meal. Okay. Do you work like a split shift or do you? Uh, well, no, I, I make my own hours, but I okay. work in the morning sometimes yep. and I work at night. Okay. But the middle of the day is optimum because I'm awake. Yep. And I've eaten like four times. Okay. And so I have the energy for the gym. Do you do one body part a day, two body parts? 
Well, up to this contest, I was doing uh, like a chest and back routine yep. or uh, triceps and biceps. Now it's breaking down to one body part a day, uh, maybe twice, sometimes okay. twice a day or uh, like he does, or just yeah. one and just keep on rotating it. So it's seven days on, no, yep. uh, no days off. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And you do one body part a day, two body parts a day. Yeah, we're we're pretty much on the same, pretty much the same program. Cycle. Um, okay. Uh, it was yeah, it was the two body parts uh, a couple of weeks ago, and now it's yeah. it's separating it, um, you know, and getting just getting those good quality reps. And I try to go for uh, you know a uh, good 300 to 500 reps on the body part, and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go, you know, and I, you know, I'll get a meal in and, you know, get my post uh, supplements and things of that nature and, uh, you know, rest for a little while, you okay. know, go to, go to work and, um, you know, right after, actually, you know, where I work, uh, mm-hmm. it's a clinical service and we have a lot of uh, youth DCF kids and uh, I just take them to the gym and then, hey, anybody oh, really? to the gym and, yeah. and it's five or six hands going up in the air like, oh yeah, let's go to the gym and, you know. Wow. And we're off to the gym, and you know, I get I get that extra workout in, and it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 a very it's a great job, and you know, it's it, sometimes I, I you know I, I tap them on the shoulder, and I'm yep. like, yeah, thank you, and they're like, well, you know, th- why are you thanking me? I'm like, yeah, because I you know I got my extra workout in, but right. you know, they enjoy it as much as I do, and um, it, it, it works out. Nice. Now, you guys have any interest to get on covers of magazines? That's well. I don't know about Uchenna, but uh, that's that's part of one of the the, the goals on. I think the, that's the ultimate goal, right? Yeah, I think that's a, one of the goals on a glory sheet I have over here. Be on a cover of a Fitness Magazine, Uchenna. What, what magazine? GQ. It, it's on my bucket list of things to do. Yeah. 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 GQ's a good start. <laughs> you start with that yeah, one. Yeah, I'll start with that. All right. I, I'll I'll be nice. I'll start with that <laughs> and go from there. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Kai, what, what's what magazines do you think you'd want to be on? Um, well, just uh, what's your favorite of all of them? You have a favorite? Well, last it was it was it was a, a time and a place where I was I, I just kept seeing Mo Mendes on this rep, uh, this rep magazine. Reps. It was just like reps, 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 and then yep. I got into reps, and I'm like. I love looking at magazines, and I'm like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> ah, my abs are better than this guy. All you right. Know? And, and it's just like, you know, uh, you know, from, from that and men's health and things like that, it's just, uh, you know, uh, it, I, would, I, I would just love to see myself on a, uh, maybe a rep cover, you know, yeah. pointing no, at I the think, abs. I something. think maybe you guys probably like to talk to a guy who shoots people for these yeah. magazines, right? Wouldn't that, that be pretty good? That would be a bonus. Well, I think we got a bonus for you. Ready? I'm ready. All right. I think we have on the line, we have Jason Ellis. He's the king of covers. I think he needs to change his website, though, because it says over 100 magazine covers, and I think he just broke 200. Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> He's the world uh, number one fitness photographer in the world. Jason, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. There he is. All right. We got two guys in the studio with me, both going to be in the show on April 14th, Fitness Atlantic. And they were both in it last year. And uh, they've both improved this year. They're working with nutritionists. They're uh, trying to come in a little bit bigger. Um, Yuchenna here has a weight issue where he goes to sleep and he wakes up five pounds lighter and he's trying to figure it out. I told him if he stays up at night, it might help. But uh, <laughs> And then we have uh, Kai Williams over here. All right, He did the show and he's working with a nutritionist and he has him eating walnuts all day long. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's looking pretty good. So, um, these guys want to know some of your secrets about uh, trying to get published in these fitness magazines. Yeah, well, there's lots of secrets. Um, You know, I'll share one little secret I learned from Jay Cutler in regards to dieting down and looking your best. That year that he came in, you know, absolutely shredded and, uh, you know, reclaimed the title by, you know, beating Dexter Jackson. He said what he did, and this is uh, kind of his secret, so, Jay, I hope you don't get mad at me. <laughs> he said he wrapped his body in plastic, like saran wrap. And you get on, you know, the stair stepper, and you just do cardio, and all that water just comes out of you, and you just look totally shredded. So that's kind of one of the things that he did. I don't know a lot of other uh, people that do that, but that year that he did that, you know, he came in totally shredded, and that was one of his secrets. So. It's cellophane. Well, yeah. Kai likes to walk on the step bill. 
and do twist with a bar on his shoulders. So he might, if you're cellophaned up, and he said that's when he gets the most attention in the gym. If he wraps himself in cellophane, they're really yeah, going to yeah. be looking at you I, now. I, I think there'll be a, a YouTube clip. I, I, hopefully, I don't mess it up and fall. <laughs> you try to wrap you up while yep. you're on there. <laughs> so, uh, do you think? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Do you think that it, it was? Um, as far as being published and stuff and him reclaiming it and the title and stuff, do you think a lot had to do with um, winning and coming in and being a champion? Or you think that a lot of people have an opportunity to be marketable and be in magazines? Well, I think a lot of people, you know, have an opportunity to be marketable. Yeah. Um, yeah, with him, you know, the conditioning that year, obviously, to beat somebody like Dexter Jackson, who all, always comes in super, super shredded, you know, mm -hmm. he just focused on, you know, being as shredded as possible. And, uh, you know, but one of the secrets in getting a cover, honestly, is, you know, that's been my life's focus here for the last, you know, decade. And so, you know, that's, shooting with me is one of the secrets, because I usually get people uh, on two, or two to three covers you know i just shot joe donnelly got him on muscle and fitness and men's workout and uh i've done that with a number of people dan decker you guys were talking about reps earlier yep from one photo shoot i got dan decker on three different covers including reps and uh uh, planet muscle and uh you know so that's that's definitely one of the secrets mm -hmm. yeah have you built up really strong relationships with these magazines I have. I mean, that's yeah. kind of the byproduct of, you know, my life's focus. Yeah. You know, so that's, and uh, they definitely turn to me because they know that I have connections with all the best top models, too. Mm -hmm. And that's constantly what they're looking for. So. And how much do you think, like, a, a pitcher helps a magazine, like, sell? Like, I, I see Greg Plick gets so many covers. I, is there a reason? Yeah. Do they just like his pictures, or does it actually help sales of that magazine? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You know, uh, I've had over, I believe, 30 covers with Greg Plitt. He's the number one guy that I've photographed, you know, the most for covers. Yeah. And Greg has a, a really large following, and, you know, it's somebody like, you know, Jamie Eason as well. So mm -hmm. if you're really popular, you have a huge following. That definitely helps sell, you know, the cover. The cover really sells the magazine. That makes you, you know, pick it up. If you've ever been in an airport, mm -hmm. you pick up that cover that just jumps off the newsstands, and that really does help sell the magazine. Right. But uh, they try to get people who are famous or people with a large following, or if you just have a really strong look, too. You know, obviously, you know, the thing I get requested from a lot in terms of magazines, they always ask me, you know, find a guy that has a good face and good body, you know. Right. So that's, you know, I am on the, the search for new faces and new people as well so the, um, you said a lot of them also shoot people who are popular. Do you think somebody's popularity as like a fitness model, I mean, have you shot other people like WWE people or sports people for these same fitness magazines or mostly athletes from shows? No, I have shot um, you know, like Carl Malone and mm -hmm. um, some football players, basketball players. I have photographed athletes for a lot yep. of these fitness publications too, mm -hmm. um, baseball players as well. So usually they like every once in a while they'll throw in you know an athlete just like Muscle and Fitness does the same thing they'll throw in a famous baseball player or UFC fighter right you know on the cover right and um, what else I want to ask you some people do like pictorials and stuff do you shoot a lot of pictorials also I do yeah uh, lots of you know pictorials feature feature stories usually they'll have a, a cover shot and then they'll have a, usually like a workout or a feature on the right. side of the person who's on the cover mm -hmm. so I do a lot of those as well yeah yeah um, do you have to go into gyms and do those type of shoots when you when you when you're with people or a lot of outside stuff also yeah you know I actually do shoot a lot in gyms right you know, a lot and but I do shoot a lot of stuff in studio too, so it just depends. You know, what the, each magazine's a little different. You know, mm -hmm. some, you know, the, the, like the men's health, men's fitness, they like just kind of the clean white backdrop look, even for workouts. Right. And you know, muscle and fitness, they kind of prefer the in in gym workouts. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jason, I, I have a question for you. Um. Uh. Do you like to uh, shoot in the gym more than uh, uh, other places, like a studio or vice versa? 
Hmm, it's a good question. You know, I like studios for just control of the light, mm-hmm. but I like gyms because it offers a lot of variety in terms of props and different, you know, just a real different variety of different shots you can get. So I like studios for lighting, and I like gyms for the different variation of props and weights that you can work with. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have a question on this too though on this posing thing okay I've witnessed some people go to photo shoots and I've seen them not know what to do and they look and they look at the photographer and go what do I do next and is it you know sometimes we've actually been telling people locally too it's like do some of your like regular photo shoots and practice for when the guys like Jason Ellis come to town because you don't want to go in there and be like just standing there like a deer in the headlights and go what do you want me to do <laughs> you know and then right. they a lot of them always just do like if it's a girl go into their figure pose or right. you know bikini front pose right. back pose now what right. and they look and it's just like what and i've seen that more people that practice with photo shoots even with like a you know an amateur photographer can get right. pretty skillful at understanding what images would look best when they have a chance to shoot with someone like you what would you say to some some of these guys like now they have like three four weeks to get ready to shoot with you like what should they do well for people who are new i would definitely recommend uh practicing in the mirror mm-hmm. you know really practicing your facial expressions and also you know practice holding different poses and um, you know, somebody like a, a Greg Plitt, you know, he practices a lot. He practices a lot in the mirror, and obviously bodybuilders practice, you know, incessantly, mm-hmm. you know, looking at different various, you know, body parts so as to maximize, you know, their definition and, and uh, their overall, overall aesthetics. So definitely practice in the mirror. I would say, you know, have, have all of your poses down. But uh, I also, you know, I've worked just with a guy yesterday who basically said, you know, Jason, I just started. I don't really know what to do. So I'm really used to working with, you know, new people as well. Okay. Posing them. So, mm-hmm. and at this stage, it just comes so natural to help people out. It's, yeah, it's just like breathing. Really? Um, what would be, like, if you're going to take somebody through a photo shoot and what's an average shoot take? Is it an hour? Average shoots probably more like an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. All right. So somebody comes in for a photo shoot. Um, what would you tell them they need? To, do they need to bring certain workout clothes that you like better than others? Yeah. You know, I always send people kind of a preparation sheet, and I tell them to bring a variety of workout clothes. But uh, you know, personally, I like just solid colors: black, gray, red, blue. Just kind of those kind of, kind of shorts. I always tell everybody to come tanned and shaved. And, uh, you know, just really diet it down as much as possible. How dark do you want people? Do you want them contest dark or a little lighter? Uh, Not contest dark, and especially not the face contest dark. Right. Just definitely lighter, more pleasing. Dark enough to bring about definition, but not so dark that you can tell the person, you know, obviously has a tan. Airbrush tanning, Mm -hmm. I think, is the best because you get the most control and the best color. Perfect. All right, we're going to take a two-minute commercial break here. When we come back... Maybe we'll talk to uh, Kai here about what he needs to do to prep for one of these photo shoots. We'll be right back. It's time for a fitness break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on FTNS. When looking for the world's best organic apple cider vinegar, there's only one that stands above all others. That's the original Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar. When it comes to your health, accept no imitations. Only Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar has the highest quality available. It's organic and kosher certified. It's unfiltered, rich in important polyphenol antioxidants. It's raw, not pasteurized, a live food. It contains the miracle mother of vinegar, rich in protein enzyme molecules, highly regarded for their nutritional and health benefits. Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar is at your favorite health food stores or in grocery health sections. Learn more and see our video at braggacv.com. That's Bragg. BraggACV.com. This is Dr. Patricia Bragg, health crusader to the world. You will love my Bragg organic apple cider vinegar and other Bragg products. 
It's here, the newest weapon in post-workout recovery nutrition. This natural and organic all-in-one formula delivers the ammunition your body needs to advance on your battlefield and beyond. Introducing Am Nutrition's basic training. Protein, branched-chain amino acids, vitamins, minerals, good fats, and enzymes with no artificial sugars, colors, or flavors. Go to www.amnutritionhealth.com and join the ranks of the supplement revolution. Beyond Protein, the body's ammunition. Am Nutrition. World's first fitness radio will keep you moving. FTNS, 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 FTNS. Hi, I'm Amy Hall, host of The Green Gate. What are you hungry for? Do you need to rebalance your plate? Join us as we talk about whole, sustainable food, awesome recipes, and all the other things that nourish us. Now is the time to change your relationship with food and get back to the simple, delicious, nutritious basics. The Green Gate, your doorway to great food and healthy living. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, only on FTNS. Need FTNS on the go? There's an app for that. Download the FTNS app for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch now. FTNS, world's first fitness radio, will keep you moving. Welcome back to FTNS, world's first fitness radio. Enjoy the show. Here with uh, on the line with Jason Ellis, and we're in the studio with Kai and Uchenna, and uh, two competitors from the show going into the Fitness Atlantic on April 14th. And um, we we're just off the air, and, and we're talking, Jason, about um, some of the more questions to really ask you. And uh, Uchenna was talking about, you know, just a photo shoot that he did, and uh, he said some of his best shots that he saw weren't the ones that were. What do you say? Like posed for? Yeah. Well, well, he had a well, one of my photographers. He was actually real good, but he um, he would spend like five to ten minutes just getting me right in in the right position, the right light, the right shadow, the right smile, the right pose, and then take the picture. Mm. And that came out great. But at the same token, it was some other pictures he took as I was trying to get myself in the right position, or like I was off the cuff doing something that mm-hmm. I wasn't supposed to be doing. And it was just he took a picture, and it came out. Even 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 better. Right. And I was just wondering, what are the uh, with you when when you take your photos? Do you have like a, a long uh, setup time of the of the model and the uh, props? Actually, I would say a lot of people comment on how quickly I shoot. I'm, I definitely don't belabor, you know, the setup mm-hmm. and so forth. So, you know, you, you definitely, you know, you want to get a shot that looks spontaneous and not, not overly posed. So, you know, but you, I do need to guide the model a lot of times into, you know, adjusting and tweaking just little you know, body parts and so forth so everything looks just right. Yeah, I noticed like last year when you came out to the show, it, it was pretty simple. You know, like your setup wasn't as complicated. Some photographers, they need like a million lights and they need the backdrops and you're just like, boom, here we go. <laughs> it's just ready to go, it seems. So it, is that pretty much how you do it? Like, it, you know, you don't travel with a whole bunch of equipment, right? You seemed pretty, uh, pretty compact and like you just like were able to do it. A lot faster. You know, than it depends. Yeah, it depends. You know, some some shoots are a little bit bigger and more detailed. Um, you know, and I will. I call it putting on the show. A lot of photographers will put on the show. They'll have yeah. a million lights and. Right. You know, sometimes that's really not necessary to get really powerful, you know, and potent pictures. And so sometimes I, I believe I did a picture of Washington Candido last year just in one of the hotels and uh, in the lobby against this red wall. It was a back shot. You may have seen it. just a back shot where he was flexing. And, and uh, he said he got so much response. And he was so impressed with the fact that I just shot that spontaneously. And it looked, you know, it looked like it was done in a studio. So, yeah. What are your favorite shots to do? Are they these cover shots with a guy with his shirt off just smiling? Or would you say like anything fashion or in suits or clothing or with props or with with automobiles? Or what would be some of your favorites? Well, 
I think anytime you get to work with celebrities, that's kind of the pinnacle of photography because the attention and to detail and and, uh, and it's just very gratifying. But I really do like photographing uh, male and female fitness models too. It's just really a great thing, and it's very obviously satisfying when you get covers. Mm -hmm. I, I really just enjoy the whole process, the taking the pictures and then watching them get published. It's really just a really satisfying career. To be honest. How about those pictures where you have like couple shots? Do you find that those are easy for couples to do or most of the time these people aren't really like the best of friends like they know each other but they're not really like boyfriend girlfriend or husband or wife or anything right and you stick two people together I like yeah. those pictures though I think that they really add a whole because they're able to I, I feel that that's more of a marketable picture to, for both crowds you know males and right. females where right. they're nice friendly looking shots and do you see a lot of those I don't I haven't seen a lot of those on covers recently, but years ago, that's all I saw. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I just shot uh, pictures of Obi Obadike and Lauren Abraham yesterday yep. and for a cover of Fitorama, and it's already got the cover. It's an Italian magazine. And uh, that you're right. The trend has gone more strictly towards either male mm -hmm. magazines or female magazines. And, right. Uh, I guess, you know, they really try to just target in on a certain demographic. But, you know, for fitness, I think that muscle and fitness, and I spoke to Joe Weider specifically, and he said that that was a really big thing for his magazine, and, and it was really a popular trend to have a male and female you know, on the cover. So For years they did. They tr yeah, it's kind of interesting that they trended away from that because Joe Weider himself said that was a really successful thing that he did with his magazine. So it's hard to say. Well, yeah, it's also, you know, a lot of people maybe don't understand that like AMI kind of owns that now so it might have taken a different direction but the magazine itself seems a little smaller than it used to but yeah, Joe Weider was pretty much everybody who's ever met him or worked with him was just so impressed with the guy that they just said you know he really was like the godfather of bodybuilding and really you know took it oh yeah really far I, I think in my personal I'll say you know I, I just think it's taken a step back since he's he hasn't been as involved you know, but it was really took a lot of people like Arnold and just made him a, a huge celebrity. It really kickstarted him. But oh, yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed those covers. The magazines from the 80s, you know, just <laughs> they just had something about them. Just uh, uh, just in the way they were put together and the style and stuff. But um, yeah, I kind of missed that. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. the chief photographer for Muscle Media. If you remember Bill from yeah. magazine for a while, and they had you know strictly male and female covers and. And uh, they, too, they said that that was really successful for them. So it'll be interesting to see if they start going back to that. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, are you doing a lot of different... Like, if somebody would come to you and... Do you think it would be smart for somebody to say, you know, I want to shoot with Jason Ellis. I Hopefully some of these pictures will be submitted. If... If they're shooting in hopes of being submitted, should they do they get their pictures right away, or do they have to wait to see if a if a magazine's going to pick up those uh, images before they start using them for like a website or something personal and publishing them? And, you know, I always I'll give the people the models their pictures, but I ask them to hold off on you know posting them on Facebook until yep. they're published mm -hmm. because that does you know tend to diminish the value. And sometimes publishers will specifically ask, you know, has this been out on Facebook? Facebook or anywhere yep. on the internet, so I do have people, you know, refrain from posting them on the, the internet. How long do you think somebody should wait before they do that? That's a good question. You know, I think I generally tell people about six months. However, I've had pictures, you know, chosen from like two to three years ago for covers. Right. In fact, Greg Plitt, just one today, Greg Plitt, a picture I shot in 2009 is going to be a, a new men's workout cover, and they just chose that today. So it's a perfect example, you know, right. how that works. Yeah. Um, we were talking about some of the posing and things that people should do um, for a photo shoot, okay? So we have Kai here. Now, you know, if he has never really done a big shoot before, um, besides some of the stuff like, right, Kai, what, would you, what have you done so far? You've done some um, stuff for your Facebook with friends yeah. in the gym. Yeah, we, um, the gym that we work out at, uh, is, is, we, we know the owner. Um, he's part of the, uh, the fitness team, and uh, we, do a, we do tons of photo shoots. 
shoot uh, we'll you know pick and choose a couple of photographers and have them come down on a you know a, a, a Sunday yeah and uh, we'll we'll do a, a shoot there and um, so most of this stuff if you're doing a photo shoot in the gym you're working out you just say okay start shooting pictures right like you, you would you say if uh, you would say you put on any oil and stopping and posing and looking at the camera or anything like that or it's mostly like candidates yeah I, I did a photo shoot where it was just a workout okay. I did the workout and they snap pictures and right now uh, the the last one that I did uh, at uh, at the gym um, we uh, actually set up props and things of that that nature I used uh, I'm, I'm actually looking at uh, Greg um, Jason I'm looking at uh, yeah. I just looked at Greg's picture there they're yeah. awesome but uh, I'm, I'm on your website I'm looking at a couple pictures that I've, I've done uh, 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 similar uh, pictures uh, like right. with the weights and things of that nature or holding the weights in the hand or a stability ball over the head and things of that nature those pictures come out awesome yeah. um, but uh, my question is uh, smile or no smile when it comes mm -hmm. to like gym pictures uh, or, or, or whether it's a, a workout picture or uh, just a picture taking in the gym yeah, you know, for me, I usually do a combination of, I'd say, like three different expressions. I call it, you know, the serious look, the half smile, where it's a smile, but your lips are closed, and then a full smile. The reason I do that is each magazine is a little different, you know. Typically, muscle and fitness, they like just the serious look, you know, most of the time. However, sometimes they'll say, oh, I want something more with the half smile. So, and then some magazines, they say they only take full smiles. So I just, I always capture all three expressions. Now, I... Uh, Jason, do you do you when you're uh, talking to the uh, you know the magazine uh, uh, bigwigs now are are they asking are they saying hey do you have any pictures of no smiles and uh, you know or or, yeah. or or are you saying hey I, you know I have this awesome guy you know he has a couple pictures and uh, you know are you sending those pictures just what you have to them or how does that yeah. work? Yeah, they usually do ask. Sometimes if I send them a great picture, they'll, and he's smiling, sometimes they'll call and say, well, I like the picture, but do you have one that's serious? It's a serious expression. So um, wow. it's important. That's why I, I just cover all my bases usually and do three expressions with each, you know, with each different pose. Jason, what, what about you're working with somebody, he's doing a photo shoot, and maybe there's something that the magazines don't like about the person's look you know like how, how do you break it down the person who really wants to be published and be like well do you give them the bad news do you tell them why certain people aren't telling them or you just keep like pushing and trying uh, to get them published in different things uh, you know what's interesting is um, I'll, there's a beautiful thing called Photoshop <laughs> and you know sometimes I'll have to alter little things you know bring their ears in a little bit make their nose a little smaller make their chin a little stronger just kind of alter them a little bit to make them look you know more especially if it's a new face somebody that everybody doesn't know yet yeah. I, you know I'll make them look just kind of enhance them a bit and that's pretty standard I mean it's very standard if you look at it, I mean, the major magazines out on the news shelves especially female magazines it's just you know mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian doesn't really look like she does on those you know covers <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah. you know so you know that's so, so sometimes everybody's got a shot. That means, you know, if, if, if their son comes back and they think somebody has a big nose and they can say, all right, hold on. Do you just go, right. okay, hold on, give me a minute. All right, here, you yeah, try you this. Know, <laughs> Send actually, it right. I fix it. Before I submit it, I fix it because I kind of know. You know what they know, like. I know what they like. I know what they're looking for. And, and some, some magazines actually like the, you know, the more real guy look, you know, mm -hmm. the more rugged, rough, and, and they don't want any retouching whatsoever, so those magazines are just submitted raw. So I, I've even some, seen some pictures where a guy will be like half shaved on his chest and have like stubble and they still put it out there. Do you see that happen too? I do, and yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that, that obviously, to me it's just an oversight of the model. I mean, it should definitely come in like, you know, shaved. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Hey so. Jason, uh, uh, another question I, I have is, um, I've, I've done a, a photo shoot and uh, and got the pictures back, and the photographer was like, "Oh yeah, um, yeah, I photoshopped a couple of them, took all your tattoos off." Now, right. um, tattoos or no tattoos? 
You know what? I'm looking at a picture right now of uh, a guy I did with tattoos and got the cover of Exercise and Health, Jesse Pavelka. And so each publication is a little different, and it depends, you know, what type of tattoo and how it looks, too. I mean, if your whole body is super tattooed, that's different than just, you know, it's just a little arm tattoo or, you know, something to that effect. But typically speaking, um, it's generally more... Uh, it's generally more marketable without tattoos. However, you know, with the, the whole trend of UFC and all the tattoos, uh, you know, on the UFC guys, it's very, it could go both ways there because you see, it's like 50-50 when you look on the newsstand that most of the guys do have tattoos. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. I, I remember meeting with a photographer and, and he, uh, you know, he, he had pictures of mine before. He took a couple pictures of mine and, and he, you know, when we were sitting down and, uh, ironing out some things and details he says uh you know no more tattoos make sure you don't get any more tattoos and 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 i only i only have three small ones and uh right and, and he says yeah don't 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 get any more tattoos so yeah yeah i was i was always wondering if it was uh you know a big thing and you know you'll see you know somebody like uh lee priest who has you know tattoos jesus he has right. like a tattoo on his face and right. um you know and I just always wondered if it, if they all you know do they do they shy away from the tattoos or they don't. But yeah, you you did make a uh, interesting point about MMA. You know, MMA kind of yeah. made it uh, kind of cool to have a tattoo and yeah, still be on the cover. Yeah, definitely more main yeah more mainstream again. Well, you know what? We have to take another two minute break already. So, um, Uchenna. Yes, sir. When we come back, we're going to talk about getting you set up, all right? On the cover. Getting you in the cover of GQ. He wants it. He said he'll start with GQ. All right? He'll start there. Then maybe work my way down. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be right back. It's time for a fitness break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on FTNS. When looking for the world's best organic apple cider vinegar, there's only one that stands above all others. That's the original Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar. When it comes to your health, accept no imitations. Only Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar has the highest quality available. It's organic and kosher certified. It's unfiltered, rich in important polyphenol antioxidants. It's raw, not pasteurized, a live food. It contains the miracle mother of vinegar, rich in protein enzyme molecules highly regarded for their nutritional and health benefits. Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar is at your favorite health food stores or in grocery health sections. Learn more and see our video at braggacv.com. That's braggacv.com. This is Dr. Patricia Bragg, health crusader to the world. You will love my Bragg organic apple cider vinegar and other Bragg products. It's here, the newest weapon in post-workout recovery nutrition. This natural and organic all-in-one formula delivers the ammunition your body needs to advance on your battlefield and beyond. Introducing Amnutrition's basic training. Protein, branched-chain amino acids, vitamins, minerals, good fats, and enzymes with no artificial sugars, colors, or flavors. Go to www.amnutritionhealth.com and join the ranks of the supplement revolution. Beyond Protein, the body's ammunition. Amnutrition. World's first fitness radio will keep you moving. FTNS. 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 Hi, I'm Amy Hall, host of The Green Gate. What are you hungry for? Do you need to rebalance your plate? Join us as we talk about whole, sustainable food, awesome recipes, and all the other things that nourish us. Now is the time to change your relationship with food and get back to the simple, delicious, nutritious basics. The Green Gate, your doorway to great food and healthy living. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, only on FTNS. Need FTNS on the go? There's an app for that. Download the FTNS app for your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch now. FTNS, world's first fitness radio, will keep you moving. Welcome back to FTNS, world's first fitness radio. Enjoy the show. 
welcome back to this edition of the Body Shop Thursday Night Live, and uh, we're here with uh, Yuchenna and Kai, and the both getting ready for the Fitness Atlantic April 14th and we're talking about setting up your cover photo shoot all right you Chenna are you ready I'm ready you're ready you, you're sure. starting with GQ and you're gonna work your way down yeah that's what I said yeah. all right now you also said something else about what are you saying about about your 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 skin tone and your jawbone oh I was uh, I, was, I was saying that my uh, my uh, the the coloring has to be right. It has to be the right light. Yeah. So to have the shadows, the reflections, because uh, I'm dark skin, yeah. and so and my skin, as I've heard, uh, I've been told, absorbs the light. Okay. So they want me to put baby oil on or some shiny substance, and yeah. then the the lights have to be bright, and uh, they work with the bounce lights yeah. and the little umbrellas they use right. to make it come out per perfectly. <laughs> Otherwise, I come out like washed out. All right. Well. And, and Jason can fix my neonatal <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> no, you're, you're giggling. I have those puffy cheeks that make me look like I'm a teenager, and so or like a little uh, teeny bopper. And yeah. you can you can Photoshop those out. Really, uh -huh. Jason? He actually researched yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, this is on there. This has been researched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like how they they can pull back my eyes to give me more of a slant, and then my nose, and then the neonatal cheeks, and I'll be a whole, whole new person. There we go. Now, now what are you going to wear for this shoot? You going to go shirtless? I don't know. GQ, I haven't seen anybody shirtless on GQ. Actually, there was a GQ cover many years ago in the 80s. Yeah. Don't quote me. But the guy had a suit on. It was unbuttoned all the way, and his shirt, obviously, was unbuttoned, and the tie was hanging right in the center, so you saw two slivers of skin. Yeah. And the tie in the center, one of those skinny ties, it kind of it kind of pulled it off nicely. You think you can do that? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 All right. So Jason, now somebody wants to shoot with you. Um, when is best? Is it the day before the show or the day after the show? You know, it really depends. Each person's a little different. Some mm -hmm. people prefer to shoot before. Uh, some people's bodies look better afterwards. So it really just depends. Um, you know, it's funny. But some people, they they peak, you know, on the day of the show, and sometimes they misjudge their dieting, and they peak the day after the show. And some people are different. Sometimes they peak before the show, and then they come in, you know, not, not at their peak. So it's different with each person. And usually, though, you know, people can hold their conditioning for a couple days after the show. So, would you say then that that somebody like in peak condition would be the better time to shoot with you, or do you like somebody with a little bit more like weight in their face and filled out? You know, it's a good question because sometimes people are a little bit too shredded on yeah. contest day, and their faces look a little drawn, and so I kind of prefer just slightly, slightly off um, peak condition. Right. Okay. So if somebody's coming in and they're going to get spray tan for the show um, so should they do that before their photo shoot or wait till after if, if they're too pale should they do it anyway and like then shoot with you how, how what do you think on the on the timing of that um, usually I just shoot people you know with their spray spray okay. tan from the show right as long as the face isn't over spray tan and you know the, as long as the face doesn't look really dark you know it's, it's, that usually works out fine what should they do with their face then not have it sprayed or have it sprayed but just sprayed more of a medium as a, in, as opposed to super dark like take like a cotton ball and just like put it on a little bit <laughs> just to kind of match it. No, they actually, the people with the airbrush, you know, yeah. actually will, they will do it just right. Oh. You, know, you, you see a lot of beginners who they go overboard on the face and they, yeah. you know, their eyes look super white. Just as long as they don't have that look, it usually works out fine. Okay. Now, um, so somebody's coming in, they're doing an average shoot with you, and they should bring, do you want them in posing trunks too, or do you want them in shorts? Uh, it depends. Uh, okay. Sometimes we'll do posing trunks. Like I did some Mo Mendez pictures um, right. in posing trunks. So it just depends what, what we're going for. Okay. Do you think more of the published stuff would be shorts than posing trunks? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you definitely want to bring shorts. And you said the best colors are dark colors for that? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like black, gray, yeah. and red. Like, those are my three favorite colors. Okay. No white shorts. Or, 
Yeah. Okay. And um, what about body oils? Should they put anything on or just stay, like, dry? No, I, I definitely think they should put, uh, you know, baby oil works really well. Yeah. And the key there is just not having it over glossy and also not having any dry patches anywhere. But that definitely brings out the highlight. So I would say definitely to, to have baby oil. So baby oil is really good for photo shoots, but like in stage competitions, a lot of times we tell people not to use baby oil because it's like a heavier oil. But it, it's good for photo shoots? It is. Okay. It is good, yeah. Yeah, not like posing oil or using Pam and all the getting all crazy, but they, a lot yeah. of guys will use Pam during yeah. the contest day. I think know. I stepped on stage with baby oil the first time. Yeah. I almost died. Like a mirror. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you become like a mirror to the judges and the lights are so shiny. bright. Yeah. Yeah. You know. um, okay, so somebody wants to come in and they're going to spend on average, um, what's for your packages of somebody coming in? You think um, a first time guys like these two, would they go. Um, with like the middle package most of the time and, and most try to of get... The time, yeah, most of the time they do go with the middle package. And my packages, they start at 750 and the great part is you only have to put 50% down. So for 375 you put a deposit down and then, you know, the balance is through the day of the shoot. So I try to make a package there that's affordable, you know, for people just starting out or mm -hmm. people on a budget. And I also have packages that go up to 2500 So, you know, but most people go with the, the middle package, the $1,500 package. Okay. Well, even with the first one, though, you're still getting 150 images. And when you get these 150, are, are they're pretty much a variety of different things where it's not like just 150 all looking the same, right? So, I mean, yeah, you're yeah. getting a lot of stuff. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. How many different, like, clothing changes do you think somebody would do in an hour? Usually two to three okay. clothing changes in an hour. Yeah. So if they did bodybuilding, trunks, shorts, and then maybe a different colored short, or what would you recommend? Well, if it was just like the, you know, just like an hour shoot, I would do probably just two different pairs of shorts and maybe okay. uh, a tank top. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so you said solid colors. Do you, do you like to stay away from logos? Does it matter if they have a logo on their shirt or? Yeah, I, I definitely stay away from logos. Right. It's just better for covers and publication. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, how many shoots do you think you could be able to fit in for like this weekend event? So if it's if you're available on the Friday and Sunday time frames, or do you shoot yeah. some of the day of the show too, or, or what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I shoot the day of the show, but usually I limit it to about four people per day. Oh, wow, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes these people just think that they come in and go crazy. So if it's only four people per day, it's like maybe 10 or 12 people that you'll shoot coming out to right. an event. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's really good. You spend a lot of time on just, you know, certain people and focus on them. And, you know, sometimes I always feel like these photographers just come out and go to shows and, and just, like, sit there and take stage shot after stage shot and then just tag people out and on Facebook and try to, like, use that whole marketing thing. And and I don't, you don't do that. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I, I appreciate from, you know, someone like you just coming in. It's like, no, you're going to get your best stuff. You yeah, know. that's my focus. It's definitely quality. And I, every time I start a shoot, I always my whole premise is to get the best pictures that that person's ever had. And and uh, most people, after they see their pictures, they yeah. they definitely agree. They say it's the best pictures they've ever had, and they get a lot of repeat clients too. You know, I said that uh, um, at the show last year. Vince called me up and someone. He's just like, hey. Jason's expensive, man. I, I don't know if I should uh, do that. I'm like, listen, you will get the best pictures you ever had. That's exactly what I said. And he goes, you yeah. think so? I go, absolutely. So, uh... Yeah, when he got those pictures back, he was just like, his dad called him a transformer because he was, yeah. <laughs> he's just yeah, like, yeah. really, look at this. Worth. You know, you look at a guy like that who, who really understands marketing himself, and he's not just going after right. going after magazines, but he has his own website, his own eBooks, he has his whole business that he runs based on his look, and his right. pictures were average. Right. And now you go to his stuff and you're just like, and, and all the other guys, that are like you know involved with him and stuff all of his friends are just like yo Vince you just like completely changed your image 
Right. And, and that's what we were talking about off the air, too. And just, you know, we're talking about your prices. Some people look and go, well, yeah, that's expensive. But then, you know, Sean says, no, he's a producer here. And he goes, no, that's average. You're going to pay $500 an hour for an, an, a photographer that sort of quality, you know. Right. And uh, The other thing to, re- to keep in mind is I look at it more of a, as an investment because a lot of these a lot of these models I'll do pictures of them uh, Joe Donnelly's one and uh, he recently got a contract with a supplement company and so my pictures help improve your image your branding you know you're just mentioning Vince Del Monte mm-hmm. and so if you utilize the pictures correctly you know obviously you get the best pictures of your life plus it's an investment you know a lot of people too they'll shoot with various photographers and they just get frustrated because their pictures don't turn out as well as they can and then they find just say, you know what, Jason, I had to make the investment, and it ends up being a good decision for him. One of the things I appreciated about you last year is we did a big promo for the WBFF Worlds, and we were using some of the images of some of the contestants for these promo posters on their Facebook. And a lot of photographers wrote to the athletes and said, can't use that picture, can't use that picture. And it was like, and they didn't know. Like, they don't understand photography rights. You didn't do that at all. And, and without anything being said, you took two images of two of the pros that had these posters done, put them together, and then put it out on Facebook and go, photography by Jason Ellis. <laughs> it was just like, you know, I really appreciate that because it's like, it, it's like they were published. You know, they used it in their own way, but they didn't get stopped. I have saw photographers that came along, shoot these shows, they'll sell the images, and then still try to claim right of ownership for whatever these people can do with their pictures and it's like wow you just made forty dollars off one image and now you're telling the person they can't use it for certain things that they want to use it for it it just really frustrates me when i see people that that operate that way and and you don't do that yeah brian i always wondered how that worked Uh, jason if you can go into uh you know speaking in depth with that because i always i always rights photo rights Yeah. yeah well it's interesting you know Canada, by the way, has a totally different perspective on photography rights. I think the models more own the pictures in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, in the U.S., typically, uh, you know, when, when I shoot, I end up owning the rights uh, in terms of in terms of uh, if the model wants to sell them to any supplement companies or anything like that. But obviously, the model has rights to promote themselves and so forth with the images on their website and that shows and so forth. So, um, but if there's any other specific questions that you have about rights, I'd be happy to answer them. That's a great thing that you do, though. I mean, just 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 working with the people on it oh, and, yeah. and not just chasing them down when they have an opportunity to uh, to get something published or to work with a supplement company. You know, a lot of times an athlete getting signed with a supplement company has to do with, well, can we use your images? And then if they don't really own these rights to their images, they can't use them or give them to the supplement company. I've seen so many people just submit pictures all the time after shooting and they don't really know the rights that they have with the photographer. And you just seem to work with people better. Yeah, well, you got to definitely always keep the bigger picture in mind. And, you know, one thing I learned is the secret to living is giving. And when you, you know, give, it tend, tends to come back, if not directly from that source, from somebody else. So you definitely have to continually give, and uh, it definitely comes back. So, right. yeah, it's my philosophy. Awesome. Yeah, well, awesome. I, yeah, I remember you saying that, you know, you had a, a picture that it took almost a year to, you know, to come out and be published. So it's definitely, right. uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's the best investment when it comes to a fitness model, you know, mm-hmm. getting the right pictures, the right photographer and someone who's going to, you know, that kind of give when it comes to, you know, uh, getting those pictures out and, 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 and doing the, the right thing. So Jason, yeah. shooting with you at the show, are you, you uh, tell us a little bit about um, how they can get in touch with you, how they can contact you and the dates of your availability. Sure. Uh, they can go on my website, which is jasonellisphotography.com. And I'll be out there, you know, about three days before the show and about two to three days after the show. And uh, I, I still have a few open uh, slots. So if people are interested, they can also call my 800 number. It's 800 
sorry, I just blanked on what my own 800 number is. 881 That's correct. 881 So they can call me on the 800 number, or best way, though, is just go on my website and, and email me. Mm-hmm. And my email address is jasonellisphoto at yahoo.com. So... It's really good. I look forward to uh, having you come back and maybe going to get some pizza again. That sounds great. <laughs> and I was just going to mention, you know, one of the, the key things is uh, I help people get published. So that's one of the big added benefits is I really help people get published and in magazines. Right. Right. Not not a new Facebook profile pic. Yeah. <laughs> Which that's, we see that's a lot definitely of. not the goal. Yeah, it's not. It shouldn't be the goal. It always is, though. It shouldn't be. Yeah. All right. Shoot with Jason. Get published. Get real pictures. You know, have somebody that's going to support you and not, you know, come back after you later and go oh you can't use that picture no use it he wants you to use it all right so yeah no it's gonna be awesome thanks again for coming out um april 14th weekend and uh hopefully we set up some of these guys to uh, meet you there and uh right. thanks again for uh, coming into to the body shop all right thanks guys oh, i appreciate it thanks jason thanks brian thanks you chenna thank thanks, you kai good night are listening to FTNS, world's first fitness radio. Online at FTNS.co. Live the FTNS lifestyle. Follow the FTNS four-step foundation of focus, train, nourish, sustain, a holistic approach to a balanced health of mind, body, and spirit. Focus. Envision your goal to get inspired. Train. Learn how to stay active and use proper techniques so you'll see results. Nourish. Proper nutrition and hydration are keys to staying healthy and energized. Sustain. The essential three R's to sustain your routine. Rest and relax to recover. Build a fitness lifestyle on the FTNS Foundation. The fitness industry is beginning a transformation unlike ever before. It is more important than ever to be innovative and creative in order to connect with your customers. FTNS, world's first fitness radio, is here to help you do it. FTNS advertising packages are designed for high-impact, high-frequency reinforcement of your message. Over 70 million people in the U.S. listen to Internet radio each month. FTNS targets fitness-minded people that you want to reach but have never been able to effectively target before. Radio advertising is like word of mouth because it comes from a friend, the listener station. Internet radio is brand new.